So, it's a wonderful God morning. It's a wonderful morning to get our family back together here. It's good to be with our brothers and sisters. And Herman mentioned just a little bit about um, the gas fight out last week, the outreach, and the impact it had. And I can tell you that even the last, all week, almost, I won't say every day because I don't know for sure, almost every day I know, I was in contact with someone who said, that was so cool what you guys did. And I had him telling me that it's nice to know in the world, and I'm paraphrasing because there's several that said it, but it was nice to know that in a world where people only care about themselves anymore, that there's a church out there um, that's, that cares about the community enough to go out and just pour into them. And so it was, it was, it's not about us, right? It's about reflecting Christ. That's what it's all about. And so just thank you so much for the hearts that were out there, that were pouring into our community. It was noticed, and people got to glimpse just a little bit of Jesus last Sunday. They got to glimpse just a little bit of that giving heart. So it was very, very cool. Please join me as we go to our Father. Dear Lord, thank you so much. Thank you for this day and this opportunity, this message. Thank you for this family, dear Lord. Thank you for everyone you did bring here today and everyone who's traveled. As Herman said, please give them uh, grant them travel mercies, dear Lord, that, that they would travel safely and well and return home well. And Lord, uh, we just ask that as you deliver this message to us today, that, that this message would be received. We would open our hearts to the seed you're about to plant. And Lord, that it would be planted and it would be planted well. And Lord, that that uh, state would have no hand whatsoever on it. Thank you for allowing us to smile at a community last week and actually have people come back and say they really appreciated the love that was poured out. And Lord, thank you for helping us to be obedient in doing that. Help us to be obedient again here today as we receive this message. And not only just that it's there and it's planted and we kick it away later, but it's there, it's planted, and it grows, Lord. That it would grow us in the direction you desire for us to go. And there would be fruit from this seed today. We just pray these things in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, we're going to start out our, our series, The Story. We're going to start at chapter 1 today, is the Son of God. And if you remember, a month ago, back on, uh, about four, four weeks ago, um, when we were doing the God Never Said That series, um, we talked about Jesus then, right? We talked about some things about him and, and the things that he did and what he, what he taught. And, and we talked about Luke 6, verse 27 through 29. He said, but to, to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to them the other also. If someone takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt from them. And it says, it says to love your enemies and be good to those who hate you. And how hard is that, right? Now, man, sometimes it's just like, oh, I don't know if I can do that. But you know what? Jesus did it. He loved the Romans who hung him on the cross. He still loved them. Wasn't really happy with what they were doing, but he knew it had to be done, right? Because it was God's plan. It was his will. And, and God tells us to love our enemies. Jesus tells us to love our enemies. Um, I, we got to figure a way to love, love our enemies, right? So um, it says, uh, uh, bless those who curse you and mistreat you. Uh, again, a little challenging there, right? Um, uh, if, if someone slaps one cheek, turn to them the other cheek. Now this is where some people get this missed over that Jesus was just this awful dude. He just didn't do it. He said, meek and mild. Just like, okay, just don't hurt me, right? And Jesus would not in any way was he that way. The reality is with that term, with that, that, um, phrase means 2,000 years ago in their day, in their place, what that meant, it was actually defiance more than anything, because what it was is if someone slapped you on the cheek, it was an insult to you. The, when you turned the other cheek, it was an insult to them, because what you were saying to them was, that way you got Go ahead. I'm waiting. You were turning the other cheek to them, saying, you got nothing on me. So Jesus is saying, you know what? Yeah, okay, they're going to slap you. Just turn the other cheek and go, I still got Jesus. That's what he's saying there. Okay, so um, if someone takes your coat, don't withhold your shirt. Well, obviously, if they stole your coat, guess what? They must need something more, right? Just never stop giving. That's what Jesus is saying. And then we look at the miracles that Jesus 
Jesus performed. He, in love, he, 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 he made the blind see. He, he uh, helped the, the mute to speak. He helped the deaf to hear. He, he healed the sick. Um, he raised the dead. He turned water into wine. What could Jesus do, right? He walked on water for crying out loud. That wasn't even winter, right? And so um, today, today, we have to remember that when, when they crucified Jesus, when they, were, when they were calling Jesus out of stuff, they never denied that he did any of those miracles. They never denied it. They just were kind of like, stop, dude. You're taking my people from my synagogue. And that's what it was more about. They, they wanted him to knock it off because they didn't want him to be a detractor from what, what the Jews were doing in the day. And he was taking people from them. Right? And so it wasn't a matter of that he didn't do the miracle. It was a matter that, that man, you're getting people's attention. And I think we just need to keep on getting people's attention, don't we? Jesus did. He wasn't afraid of people's attention. He did it all the time. And in the end of our conversation, oh, oh, no, in the end of Jesus' life, what happened? The greatest miracle of all, right? Went to the cross and was resurrected and redeemed us of our sins and our weaknesses and our flaws. Right? Anyone could die. It was nothing for him to die. If he had just died and nothing else beyond that, he never arose again. It would not have been miraculous. Because what? That's 100% mortality rate. Right? We're all dying. That's the way it's going. But he rose again and redeemed us of our flaws. And in the end, when we, when we wrapped up that message the other, the other week, um, we determined that, that Jesus is either a liar, a lunatic, or his Lord, right? We determined that, right? We knew he was one of the three. Had to be one of the three. Li liar, lunatic, or Lord. And we, we agreed unanimously, I believe, I hope, Unanimously, unanimous, unanimously, it's easy for you to say that He was Lord, right? He's our Lord. He's our Lord and our Savior, our Redeemer. And so, who else? Today we're going to break apart Jesus a little bit more. Who else is Jesus, right? And we could probably rattle off. It would take nothing for us to probably rattle off 10, 12, 15 names for Jesus, right? Different, different terms for Jesus. In fact, why don't you just do that? What? Who is Jesus to you right now? Just put it up there. Say it out loud. Savior. Strength. Speaker. Absolutely. And so many more things, right? Redeemer. Right? The Son of God. <laughs> that one. Um, but here's another one. Here's, here's another one we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about Jesus is the narrow gate. And Jesus tells us he's the narrow gate. In Matthew 7, verse 13 and 14, he says, Enter through the narrow gate. This is Jesus talking to the red letters of love. Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it. But small is the gate, and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. He is the gate. He's the narrow gate. He's not the wide gate. And when you have these people that, I won't even name names, you just know who they are, or I've named them before. When they're out there saying there's many ways to heaven, there's many ways to God, there's many ways to be saved, right there it is. Just take it to Matthew 7. But Jesus said there's one way. He says he's the narrow gate, and through him we're to go, right? And we're going to look some more down the line here. Um, uh, it, in John 10, verse 9, it says, I am the gate, whoever enters through me will be saved. We need to enter through Jesus. We come to the Lord to come to God through Jesus, our Lord and Savior, right? Um, there was, a, there was a, a marathon out in California a few years back. Um, 128 participants in this marathon. And as they went, they're, they're running along their path. There's a bunch of them took off down this road. They started heading down this road. And one guy goes, no, 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 the signs are up here. And one guy's trying to get them. He's like, no, 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 come this way, this way. This path is the path we're supposed to be taking. And 123 of them laughed at him and went this way, and only four others followed him. So there was five that went the full route of the marathon. The others all took the shortcut. They took the way that everyone else was going. That's where everyone else was going. Why would I, why would I go with, that, with one lunatic over here instead of following the crowd? And so they all went. Now here's what happens. 
See, they went through the, the road that was wide. They went through the wide gate instead of the narrow gate. And you know what happened? They were all disqualified. They could not run for the prize. Five people finished the marathon, not 128. Don't matter how many crossed the finish line. And we are all coming before the foot of the throne. And guess what? Those that go with the five are going to be the ones who finish the race and win the crown. It will not be the way of the world. It will not be the 123. So we have to remember that. The things in our life, we're doing it because well, everyone else is doing it. Well, it's okay. Why not? This is what this is what the most people are doing. It must be the right thing. No, it's not. And it's, especially if most people are doing it, guess what? It's probably the wrong thing. Especially when it comes to our Lord. Because he tells us few will come through and they're okay. There's a story about Billy Graham back in the early days of his crusade ministry. Uh, he was at, in, in, in one of the towns, right? I mean, he, he went through so many cities and towns and stuff. And so he's in, in one particular town, and he comes out of the hotel. He had a letter he was going to mail, and he comes out of the hotel, and he sees this young man standing there, this kid, you know, and he says, hey, son, he says, how do I get to the post office? I need to mail this letter. And, and so the young man is very, very kind, just gives him the directions, tells him this is how you get there or whatever. And when he was done, Billy Graham turns to him, and he says, come to the Coliseum tonight, and I'll tell you how to get to heaven. And the boy's response was, Mr., you don't even know how to get to the post office. <laughs> right? <laughs> how many times have we so lost that we don't know how to get to the post office? Post office is okay. But how about the foot of the throne? How about the gates of heaven? How many times have we done? There's a lot of people out there who aren't going to heaven. There's a lot of people out there who foolishly tell themselves they are. Because they showed up at church on Sunday morning. But they did not go through the narrow gate. They continued to go and went the world. And Jesus says, come through the gate. Now there's a lot of people out there, those who don't know how to get to heaven, those who didn't come and hear Billy Graham at the Coliseum, right? Those who have not heard Jesus' word. There's a lot of reasons for that. Some of it's ignorance. And I don't mean ignorance like they're dumb. I mean, ignorance like they just, they just don't know. They just don't, maybe no one told them. Maybe they didn't understand when they were told. Maybe they didn't open their hearts. Maybe they were too busy focused on the world and couldn't hear what was being said by the pastor. Or the brother, or the sister, or the parent that was trying to share with them. Or the child. The reality is we have to see, we have to go through the narrow gate. And I'm spending everything I've got trying to help people to understand that. We must go through the narrow gate. We need to lead them to Jesus. We don't need to lead them to the ways of the world. We don't need to tell them, oh, there's so many ways to get to heaven, because there's not so many ways to get to heaven. There's one way to get to heaven. His name is Jesus Christ. Right. It is the only way. And when we allow them to continue to believe that, no, it doesn't matter, you can go all these different, you whatever, just be a nice person, you'll go to heaven. When we allow them to believe that lie, we'll say, well, we'll go ahead and see you in hell. Because it's okay, you can go there. Because I'm going to go through the gate, but I'm not going to tell you about it. But if we're going through the gate and we're not willing to tell anyone else about it, are we really the following one? Are we truly reflecting Jesus Christ? Are we truly going through the gate? Or we stand at the gate and wave at every room and go, no, 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 it's okay, go ahead. Go ahead, you're fine. And we're just standing there, we're not actually stepping through. John 14, verse 6 says, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. There's another one you might want to share with the folks when they try telling you there's so many ways to get to heaven. There's certain people out there who are doing this on television who are literally leading millions and millions of people away from Jesus Christ. I'm not going to answer for that. They're going to answer for that. And if you tell people that if there's a million ways, there are many ways to get to heaven, Guess what? You're going to answer for that. Okay? Um, but what you say? Jesus is the way. Not a way, but the way. Jesus is the way to heaven. The way. We don't want to take a way. We want to take the way. So he's the narrow gate. If we take the narrow gate and we follow the way of Jesus Christ, if we go through the narrow gate, and follow the way, then we come to the Father. <clears throat> then we come to the Father. Now, I know, just sometimes, it's, it's like, but this 
so easy to go there. I put out the line going this way. Here's the thing. ACDC had a song back in the day. They had a song back in the day. It kind of just describes this. I never tried to leave the world the direction they wanted to go, right? There's a highway to, and I remember the kids were in here, so we're going to say the other place. I already used the other word once already. I don't know what that must have been. But, um, but the, the, the song, there's a highway to, there's a highway to, you know what? It's more than a highway, folks. It's like a 10-lane freeway. It's wide open, and there's millions and millions of people going down it. And they're all racing to the finish line that they think is going to be one thing that it's not. And it's not my place to judge them. It is my place to talk to them. It's my place to put the truth out there. And if I were to not let you know there's only one way, if I were to lie to you and tell you just follow ACDC's advice, I would be sending you to that place. I would be leading you to that place. And it would be on my shoulders. I won't allow that. I'm going to answer for that one day. Did I tell them the gate, the one way, the narrow gate, the one way? Or did I tell them, take the freeway, it's okay. We'll have fun. It'll be a good party. And that's what we have, right? So, so why do people not take the narrow gate? Because it's a good party, right? Or maybe we just have that terminal illness called the procrastinates. And there's a lot of procrastinates out here. See, the procrastinates, that's, that's when we say, I know, I know I should give up cheating on my wife, but I can do that tomorrow because I want to have me one more good night. I know I should give up the booze, alcohol, whatever, but I'm going to do that tomorrow because, well, it's, it's just another day. It's okay. I can do that tomorrow. I know, and you fill in the blank, but I can do that tomorrow. But here's the thing. We're not promised tomorrow. We don't know that we have tomorrow. We don't know that I can even finish this message and all of us still be here. We don't know that. We're not promised that. We're not promised that. We're, we're told not to bank on that. So when we have that, 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 that terminal illness of the procrastinate, and we say, ah, I'll straighten my, I know he's telling me to change things, but I'll, I'll do it tomorrow. Right now I'm on the freeway and I'm enjoying, I got the wind blowing through my hair. I'm having a good time. The problem is not when you get terminal cancer, at least that one, you got a chance, you get diagnosed with terminal cancer, and then what happens? You're like, oh, well, okay, well, um, I need to get my life in order. And it's a little shocker, right? So you kind of go, oh, and you straighten your life. There's so many people who have given their life to the Lord after they've been diagnosed with a terminal illness. There's so many people who have, so many people in prison that have given their life to the Lord after they got the death penalty and when they got close to that day. Here's the problem. Far too often there's a car crash instead, and you're killed term instantly. Far too often you have an aneurysm that, and your blood vessels just burst. And I can tell you, I had a cousin die recently from a, from a, a, a blood clot that he just he got up in the morning. Well, no, he didn't get up in the morning. He went to bed at night, didn't get up in the morning. If he was planning on changing and giving his life to Jesus Christ tomorrow, guess what? He can't do it. He can't do it. I know somebody had a brain aneurysm. Or, or uh, take it back, heart aneurysm, aortic aneurysm. They thought she was going to die. Well, now she's okay. But it happens all the time. You have that aneurysm, that aortic, that brain, that whatever. I worked with a guy whose wife had a brain aneurysm. She died. They're at her son's baseball game. She had a brain aneurysm. She ended up in a coma in the hospital with no brain activity. Kind of hard to give your life to the Lord if you got no brain activity. And she died. Folks, we don't know. The car crash, you don't have a chance to give your life to the Lord tomorrow. You've got to do it today. That's what he called us to do. He tell, calls us to change today, to follow him today. He doesn't say, hey, you know what, just... Hang out on the freeway, partying on down, do a little bonfire, 
just live it up, love it up, follow ACDC's advice, and tomorrow come on over here. Tomorrow come use the, the narrow gate. He doesn't say that, does he? Another thing about Jesus, Matthew 7, verse 25, the rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the, that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. Jesus is the rock our house's foundation needs to be upon. He's the rock for us to build upon. He's the one, the only one. We need to walk through the narrow gate follow the way, and build our house upon the rock. The real, true, redeeming rock. The one who builds his house upon a stand, what? His wife away, doesn't it? But he who builds his house upon the rock endures. Find yourself, if, if, if you refuse to go through the narrow gate right today, if you refuse to follow the way, if you refuse to build upon the rock, all those cool things you, you think you're doing, all those cool things that you're going to do tomorrow are for not if you don't get to tomorrow. We need to go today. We need to turn our lives over to Christ today. Not tomorrow. We need to change. Now, turning your life over to Christ isn't like, yeah, Jesus, you're my Lord, but I'm still falling down a freeway. When we give our life to Christ, we will go through the narrow gate and we will do what Christ did. We will reflect Jesus Christ. Are you going to be perfect in it the first time through? No. You're going to fall down and Jesus is going to go, come on, man. Get back up. Hey, girl, it's okay. I'll help you. That's what I'm here for. That's what I'm here for, right? So, maybe it's a matter of the path is just difficult to see. Maybe people just, they can't, they got, you know, whether it's the blinders, maybe they got glaucoma or something, I don't know, and they just can't see very well. So we're going to look at what our scripture tells us about that, but i got a quick little joke for you first. Um, how do we know that, that the guys were the ones who brewed coffee in the biblical days, in the days of Christ? How do we know that? Hebrews. Our right, Bible tells us Hebrews, right? So we're going to go to Hebrews and we're going to learn a little bit today. It's a bad dad joke, but you know what? You're going to tell it. You're going to share it. It's going to happen, so it's okay. And I happen to know the one who gave the answer already has said it before to other people. So um, so Hebrews 12, verse 2. Fixing our, our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Who did they say Jesus is? They said Jesus is the pioneer and perfecter of faith. He's the pioneer and perfecter of faith. He's the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. If we're a Christian. And so, what's that mean? What's, what's a pioneer? What's a perfecter? I went to Miriam's Webster and, and looked it up. Okay, so I want to make sure I give you some decent this uh, definition, okay? So, pioneer, to open or prepare for others to follow also. To originate or take part in the development of. I think Jesus was pretty good about opening up the way for us, wasn't he? He was really good about opening the way. He laid it out for us. There's a path for us to follow. The only path for us to follow. So, he pioneered pretty good for us. To originate or take uh, or take part in the development of, I, I think that you know he might be able to stake some claim to that. He might have developed this whole Christianity thing, right? He might have had a hand in that. Uh, perfecter, how about that one? Well, Mary Webster says now they had like 22 different definitions of perfect or perfect. They didn't have perfecter, but perfecter is someone who is perfect or who perfects. Other things, right? And so, um, according to Mary Webster, perfect is being entirely without fault or defect, like a flawless, perfect diamond, uh, satisfying all requirements or being accurate, to bring to final form, to make perfect, to improve, to refine. 
I think that um, it says, when it says without flaw or defect, would that be like the perfect lamb? The perfect sacrifice? When it says to bring the final form, does that mean like we'll be, if we go through the narrow gate, we follow the way, if we build our house on the rock, when we come before the form, before the throne, will we not be in our perfect final form if we followed and reflected Jesus Christ all our life? So here's the question. Are we going to, are we going to go through the narrow gate? Are we going to do it tomorrow or are we going to do it today? What are we going to do? Are we going to take the way, not a way? Not the free way, but the way? Like we're called to do? Are we going to build our house upon the rock or are we going to keep ourselves a whole bunch of little idols? See, the thing is, like, if you take, take, um, uh, uh, Moses, when he come down, he went up the mountain, right? He went up the mountain to get those two stone wall hangings, didn't he? That's what they were, wasn't it? Didn't they drill holes in those things, just hang them on the wall of the tent? Right? And, and because he was taken too long, then the people down below had kept all their gold that they brought with them, and they made the golden calf, right? You know that howl, worthless golden calf that they made? Don't we do the same thing? Don't we make idols for ourselves? Don't we go, oh, that's great. Oh, I love that scripture. Oh, that's a good one too. Oh, I love the statue, Jesus. Do we remember to bring our kids to Christ? When we have that cross, to, is, is this a, just a reminder? Is it just a decoration? Or does it mean something to us? If you have the picture of the Lord's or the Last Supper in your house, is it because, you know, well, it just looks cool. I like this rendition of it. Or is it because you understand the meaning behind it and you live it out? See, here's the thing. If we don't go through the narrow gate, if we don't follow the way, if we don't build our house upon the rock, we're going to sink in the sand. We will not be going where we think we're going because we claim to be a Christian. If we're not reflecting Jesus Christ, if we're not letting him be the pioneer of our life, and if we're not letting him be our perfecter, and yes, we must let him, because we could choose to deny him, obviously. If we choose to go down the freeway instead of being perfected through the way, we're not going to end up where we claim to end up. And where so many churches lie to their congregations and tell them, hey, no, you're going to go to heaven. It's okay. There's so many ways. You're a good person. That's all it takes. We can do nice things. Doesn't matter what kind of party life you live. Doesn't matter where you actually have your idols at. If all these are is decorations, they're no more powerful than that golden calf. So I'm just asking you, are you going to go through the gate? Matthew 16, verse 15 through 17 um, says, but Jesus is talking, he said, but what about you, he asked, what, who do you say I am? And you might remember these verses from a couple weeks back. See, he was talking to Simon Peter, and, and the people had been saying that he was, he was another prophet. He was another whatever. Just a, he's just another man. And so Jesus said, what about you, he asked. Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, but this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. See, the thing is, is that Simon Peter, so many of them, all these disciples that came to Jesus, followed him for a little bit, and then turned away and went back to the freeway. There were so many that they just kept everyone in the day. I use that as a broad stroke. Everyone in the day was saying, he's another, he's another prophet. He might, he might be John the Baptist reincarnated. He might be, you know, and which I find really weird when they say that. Because John the Baptist baptized Jesus, so how could he be John the Baptist reincarnated? Come on, let's think. 
But here's the thing, right? It wasn't because of what he saw. It wasn't the flesh and blood. It wasn't why he knew who Jesus was. He knew who Jesus was, and Jesus says it because my Father, by my Father in heaven, that's how he knew. By his faith, by his trust and faith in God, by his trust and faith in Jesus Christ as his Lord and Redeemer, by his trust in Jesus Christ as being the narrow gate, as being the way, as being the rock for him to build upon. That is why God revealed through his faith who Jesus Christ was in a world that said, it don't matter, there's a bunch of ways to go, let's just burn some stuff up on a table. It's okay, you can say you're sorry by burning stuff. And Jesus said, no, 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 I am the way. We have a choice to make. We have to choose what we want to do. We can go out and love our community for a day and call it good. Or we can go out and love our community every day and say, I can't do enough. When God puts people around you, we can reflect Jesus Christ to them. Or we can say, no, nah, it's okay, you're a big person. <clears throat> Which in essence is to say, see ya, see ya, oh no, it's okay. Yeah, go ahead. Be one of the 123. Don't worry about being one of the five. Or we can reflect Christ and say, no, 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 you need to be one of the five. We need to be one of the five. Do you have the faith? Do you truly have the faith that God will reveal, will reveal Jesus Christ to you in ways that he's never revealed him to you before? Do you have that faith? Do you grow in Jesus Christ daily or at very least near daily in your understanding of who he is? So many people will say, no, Pastor, I just don't, I don't have ten minutes. Like it's, I know, I know you say ten minutes in the Word each day. You say ten minutes of study. You don't want me just to speed read. But I just, I just don't have ten minutes. Hey, you want to go to the game tonight? I got some stuff. I, just, I don't have ten minutes, but hey, we're going to do a fire pit tonight. You want to come out? I, I don't have ten minutes, but there's a booming party going on tonight. Who's our idol? Which way are we going? What's important to us? Where we spend our time will tell us what's important. I don't have ten minutes. You don't? What if Jesus said, eh, I don't have ten minutes. Please join me as a prayer of God. Dear Lord, thank you. Thank you so much for this message. Thank you for what you do with this message to the Lord. All I was is a, a, just a mouthpiece for it, Lord. It was your message, and Lord, let it be your message. Help it to be your message. Lord, help us to understand there's only one way, one way to the foot of your throne and to your heaven. We all get to come to the foot of the throne. Father, help us to be the five, not the 123. Father, help us to follow the way. Help us to build upon the rock. Help us to stay out of the sand. Father, help this seed to grow. Help lives be changed. Today. Not tomorrow. We don't know about tomorrow. We don't even know about the end of this day. Father, help us to change. Help us to devote ourselves to you. Help us to reflect your Son always.